All right, people. There will be no intro tweet tonight, no intro Twitter video, because um, I didn't have one lined up, and I didn't tweet any interesting videos today, but my goodness, people. Wait until tomorrow. Let me set my mic. Wait until tomorrow. By the way, I'm trying out another shirt. Who, what, when, where, why? Who, what, when, where, why? We're trying it. We're trying it all out. There's going to be, I'm going to be doing a live stream tomorrow and it's not going to be Johnny Depp. How's, how's my audio, by the way, before we even, before we even go um, further than this, how's the audio? Tamara Lich or Tamara Leach, the, uh, the, the, the woman who was accused of being the organizer of the Ottawa protest locked up for two and a half weeks before she got bail release terms, which were to call them constitutionally onerous, uh, would be the constitutional understatement of the, you know, the history of the constitution. She has had such onerous bail terms imposed on her so that she could at least breathe fresh air pending her trial on mischief related charges related to that protest. She apparent she made a motion to reconsider uh, some of the bail terms, which, you know, are being argued to be excessively unconstitutionally, totally unjustified. And the crown of Canada came in. And if you're on the vivabarnslaw.locals.com community, you would have already seen the notice of application for bail review. The crown, I don't know, strategically, maybe to potentially to punish her for having the audacity of asking that her bail terms be reconsidered. Uh, put in a notice to basically accuse her of having violated her bail terms and they want to put her back in jail. And they want to put her back in jail because they're arguing that her having been nominated for the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms Freedom Award, Justice Award, named after, um, I forget the name of the individual who it's named after, Jonas, I want to say, a, a, an individual who escaped Eastern European communist authoritarian governments and came here and became an influential figure on freedom and, you know, the ills of communism. The JCCF wants to give her the George Jonas Award, I think it's called. And um, they're now alleging that by virtue of the JCCF having, uh, you know, promised or, you know, having said that she's going to get that award at a gala, that she breached her tail, her, bra her, ba her bail terms, and they want to put her back in jail presumably seize her $20,000 bond. I think that's what she put out. Um, the crown is the state in Canada. It's the crown is the, 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 you know, the, the royalty of government. They want to put her back in jail because they argue that her having been offered, granted, you know, pledged this award, pledged uh, by the JCCF, put her in breach of her bail. And therefore she should be re-jailed until her trial. And they had a hearing on it today and it's going into tomorrow. And apparently, it was wild, the hearing. Wild and nuts. And um, so there's going to be a webinar-type uh, broadcast where you can access and view the hearing. I'm not going to be able to rebroadcast any portion of the audio, video, screen grabs, whatever. But I'm going to listen to it and tweet with my mouth updates as this goes down. Because apparently, the Crown Prosecutor was so out of line today with the judge, the judge said to the Crown Prosecutor, you better cool it. You better take the pause to calm down, think about your behavior, and come back, and we'll start from scratch. And apparently, when the Crown Prosecutor came back, that's not that's not how he he did not start from scratch. So that's it. That's that's what we're going to be doing tomorrow. So tune in for that because that's going to be phenomenal. I'm going to maybe start at nine thirty, go over the articles. CBC had an article, Canadian Press had an article. Go over the notice of application for the bail hearing. And it's, uh, you know, it, it will be no Johnny Depp nonsense. Although I still don't think the Johnny Depp stuff is nonsense, but tomorrow, Tamara Lich, day two of her bail rehearing, which she initiated. And the Crown said, thank you for uh, daring to challenge us. As a, in order to thank you for that, we're going to try to put you back in jail on the basis that you being given an award by the JCCF puts you in breach of your bail conditions. And, and people still think Justin Trudeau still, you know, wants to judge Putin for kicking out journalists from Russia when he acts worse than, you know, like the worst dictator in Canada. Okay. Viva 
Uh, what does a zombie vegetarian eat? Grains. I get that one. I get that one. Uh, standard disclaimers. Thank you very much, Jonathan Bailey. Super Chats. YouTube takes 30%. If you do not like that and you don't want to support YouTube, we are simultaneously streaming on Rumble. Rumble has Rumble Rants, the equivalent of a Super Chat. Rumble takes 20%. So it's better for the creator, better to support a platform you like. But if you want to support us, best place, vivabarneslaw.locals.com. No legal advice, no medical advice, no election fortification advice. I hear kids screaming in the background. They're fighting over slime. Doesn't matter. Tonight, we have Larry Sanger. Um, for those of you who may not know, Larry Sanger is the co-founder of Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Who, what, what, why, where? He's the co-founder of Wikipedia who left Wikipedia because he thought, I don't even want to say what I think Larry thought. We're going to let Larry say it for himself. It's going to be an amazing discussion. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to take as many questions as you have that I do not get to in the chat. So put them in there. And, and Barnes will be joining us sooner than later. I hope I gave him the links. I'm sure I did because I have them. Let me bring in Larry. Larry, coming in hot. Sir, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks audio. for having me here. Chat, let me know if the audio, I think I may have to bring up Larry's audio. So let me know. I, give, a, give a mic check one, two, or the, the elevator pitch, Larry, for those who don't know who you are. First, is, is it this one? Is this the one that's working? Or is this the one that's working? Oh, no, I think it's the one on your computer. No, that one's working. That one's working. This right. one right here? There you go. Okay. All right. That's why. That's okay. Right. Yeah. Um, so uh, what's the question? Sorry. Well, let's see. Elevator pitch before I delve into your yes. deepest childhood memories before we come back to the present <laughs> with Wikipedia. Okay. Um, elevator pitch. Uh, my elevator pitch would be actually for uh, the encyclosphere. Um, basically, I think that what the world needs, if we're going to um, improve on Wikipedia, is to network together all of the other encyclopedias and make it really easy for other people who are writing encyclopedic content to publish their articles um, according to a, an uh, open standard. Um, an open encyclopedia standard. So uh, it's called the encyclosphere because it's like the blogosphere, just like the blogosphere uses RSS, we're adopting a new standard for encyclopedia articles. And by doing this, this is going to make it possible for new kinds of search engines in general, but certainly um, encyclopedia search engines that uh, are, are going to, we think, change the way that people get their reference content. You're not going to be tethered to Wikipedia to, to easily, quickly find um, the, uh, the best articles on everything. It will actually open up the competition for, to state uh, the, the uh, general definitions of every, topics to, uh, of every topic to the entire world, not just the people who can get along with uh, Wikipedians. Okay, now I, I've, I've lowered your volume up my volume. Everybody, let me know if this is good enough. Uh, Larry, I, I think I saw, I was watching some of your uh, prior interviews today. I th you're, you're in Ohio now? Yes. So wh wh where are you from, born and raised? How many generations, American? What did your parents do? What was your childhood like? Not too long, but just so we can try to understand sure. who you are as a human. Okay, I think I can do that. Um, I was uh, born in Bellevue, Washington. I went to Redmond Elementary School before Microsoft was there um, for a, a short time. Then I went to, uh, uh, well, my dad was a, a marine biologist. I studied seabirds. So we went to uh, Anchorage, Alaska, um, and I grew up there from the age of seven to 18. Um, and then I went to uh, Reed College um, which is one of the most liberal colleges in the United States um, and studied philosophy. And then I went off to Ohio State and got uh, two more degrees in philosophy. Um, and then I decided I didn't want to be a, pro a philosophy professor after all. So I started working on internet stuff. Um, so not much uh, uh, longer after that, Jimmy Wales, who I had known in the middle of the 1990s, um, he hired me basically to be the, the, basically the founder of something he called Newpedia. Um, and uh, 
uh, that evolved into Wikipedia. And then, so two years after I got involved at that, I quit and essentially in disgust. We can talk about that if you like. Mm -hmm. And I've been working on a variety of, you know, education um, and reference, mostly nonprofits ever since. And I'm the poorest founder of a top 10 website um, alive, as far as I'm aware. What uh, triggered the initial interest in philosophy? Um, well, I, I've been interested in uh, philosophical questions since I was a kid. Um, I remember um, a, a car rides going to church. We went to like uh, Missouri Synod Lutheran Church um, until I was about 12 or so. And um, I remember asking because I'd been hearing these um, words floating around. What exactly is the difference between the mind and the soul and spirit? And uh, of course, my parents, uh, not having any sort of philosophical or very little sort of uh, theological training, really couldn't answer those questions for me. And that I found that interesting of how, why can't they answer these? I mean, they're using the words. Um, it seems like, uh, and they seem to, they think it means something. So yeah. That's now just the, an example. I could give other uh, examples from my childhood, if you like. Well, well I was gonna it, say, it, you, you mentioned church. So you, you, I thought maybe your, na your name was Singer, but changed to Sanger. So were you, were you brought up religious? Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Um, until, as I say, until I was about 12. And then, you know, when my parents got a divorce and um, we stopped going to church and uh, I, I lost my, uh, my belief in God when I was about uh, 15 or 16 or so. Um, and it's actually one of the reasons, again, also why I, um, I started studying philosophy and just thinking about philosophy a lot, um, about the same age. And the uh, did that just uh, did any of your philosophical explorations change or revise your religious beliefs? Well, I I believe in God again as of uh, um, a couple of years ago, um, and uh, it wasn't. I mean, I I taught philosophy of religion a couple of, for a couple of quarters at Ohio State, so I'm familiar with the issues. Um, and I I had read a lot of um, the of the Bible, but I never read it all the way through. So it wasn't really philosophy per se that that um, changed my views. It was actually reading the Bible all the way through and, and thinking hard about and and um, looking up the most plausible answers to all the questions that I could think of as I was reading it. Um, that just gave me new insights on all of the old arguments that I remember teaching in philosophy of religion and it just gave me an entirely new perspective. I actually think that it's more rational now to believe that God exists than that he doesn't. Uh, let, let me ask you this, not to get too theological, Larry, but so what, what, what is, if you say you believe in now believe in God, what do you, how do you define God? Yeah, well, I I like the um, at least as, as long as we're talking about um, what the philosophers call natural religion, I like the nature of God to fall out of the arguments for the existence of God. Um, so, for example, one of the the most basic sorts of arguments for the existence of God is that um, there needs to be an explanation of why there is something rather than nothing. There needs to be an explanation of um, why the constants are as they are and not some other value, why the laws are as they are and not something else, why there was a certain amount of matter in a certain sort of configuration at the beginning of it all and so forth. And if, if you accept that there's an explanation of that then all of those things, all of those things are you know, uh, constrain your um, your understanding of what God is, because 
basically um, God then is uh, that which um, created time and space and therefore God cannot exist as part of time and space. He created it. Um, and that, that is then what it would mean to say that that God is atemporal or eternal, perhaps. God's eternity might mean something else in addition to that. But you see what I'm saying? You go through the arguments for the existence of God, and that gives you insight on what the concepts that are sort of built into um, the arguments, uh, what they mean. But unfortunately, it's... Uh, I mean, I could I could give you like the the typical philosopher's definition of, of God, and I could say that God is a a spirit or a soul, um, which is the creator of the universe, and and um, and list off a few other things like that, um, but it doesn't really help very much. Um, I think of. Uh, now I think of God more as basically the subject of the Bible. Um, that's actually more helpful. Yeah, the uh, you described in, uh, what philosophers are trying to explore was part of the reason that uh, my brother entered uh, philosophy, he, philosophy of religion, uh, and then all the other studies. He thinks I understand it, but uh, it's not always easy because it gets a little esoteric and academic at times with its own arcane language internally. Though he has a good book we'll be discussing this Friday at Viva Barnes Law dot locals dot com uh called how do you know which is how do you know anything how, how do you figure things out how do you under i guess epistemo i i never get the word right epistemological okay yeah yeah right, yeah that's it so he does that he, he teaches philosophy uh and all and all that jazz so the but it's interesting what you described was similar to his curiosity in the first instance and what led him to explore it now from that what led you to want to be interested in a global internet uh encyclopedia <laughs> um, well, you know, uh, originally I, I just thought that it would be cool to, uh, to be employed as an editor of an encyclopedia. And then when Jimmy Wales basically gave me the opportunity to start to be, to, to be hired on, and my job description was, here, start an encyclopedia. It's like, wow, that sounds awesome. So that was my job. Um, and when uh, when I did that, that just gave me a new set of goals and actually new set of skills. Um, and I've, I've since worked on all kinds of uh, other encyclopedias in various capacities. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm now a large part of the of my motivation for you know, continuing to work on encyclopedias, encyclopedia projects. I'm not working on an encyclopedia anymore. I'm working on uh, an encyclopedia network. So it's different. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I want to solve the problem that is Wikipedia, basically. Wikipedia is um, has all sorts of problems, and I feel a bit responsible for that, um, for unleashing it on the world. And uh, I'm also, I think I'm in a position due to my history and due to my abilities um, to actually do something about the problem, at least try. So I've been trying. Larry, Larry I mean, I, I'm an idiot. I, don't, I see the word wiki in a bunch of places and I don't know what it means. You have Wikipedia, Wiktionary, uh, what is it? The fan wiki, uh, yeah. WikiLeaks. What, does, what is a wiki? A uh, wiki is just a website that, that, at least in principle, anybody can edit. Um, so uh, you can, the most wide open wikis, like Wikipedia in principle, you can go in without even cre creating an account, start editing the page, hit um, enter, save, and, and your latest version of the article will be overwritten the, the one before it and it becomes uh, what is what is known uh, on that topic of course uh, uh, wikis don't have to be encyclopedias 
a lot of people think that, but but uh, wikis were around for five years before Wikipedia, and they they were not really encyclopedias before that. It was more of a kind of discussion and you know feeling the community out for the sense of their notion about some software topic. That's what it was basically before that. Now, it's your, basically, it's, yeah. What was your original objective with Wikipedia? Um, well, uh, to create the biggest, uh, most useful encyclopedia uh, covered the, you know, more topics than had ever been covered uh, that was open to everybody in the world that, and, and that was neutral. In other words, that uh, fairly represented a really broad collection of, of views um, so that a, a rational person could read an, or, an article about a topic and, um, and come away with the tools that, that they would need to um, at least begin to form a, a good judgment on the topic without, without being propagandized, you know. Okay, so like I, I'm still picturing whenever I think about a, a startup tech company or something like I go to Facebook, I think of kids in a garage or, or wherever. How does Wikipedia start? What does it look like when it starts? And how do you write that first line of code that then becomes what Wikipedia is? Well, um, I wasn't a, I wasn't a programmer. Um, I mean, I learned a little programming afterwards. Um, and that wasn't my job in the in the the code was already written at least the first version we used something called use mod wiki in the first in the first version but anyway um yeah i i drove across the country to uh to jimbo's office and he had a i guess what four or five people working there already and it was a very small sort of thing in uh, pacific beach uh san diego and uh, you know, we just we just sort of uh, hung out and talked about what the basic requirements should be of a general, free, public participatory encyclopedia, um, and started started it out relatively quickly on on uh, a series of I don't know if you remember these uh, mailing lists. Back then, 20 years ago, there were mailing lists, and and it's basically a discussion that happens via email across. You know that that could involve up to you know hundreds, even the biggest ones had thousands of people, you know, uh, subscribed, and uh, yeah, that's how it all started. And then we wrote uh, software um, for that. I'm talking about Newpedia, and then after a year, basically, we adopted. Um, wiki software at my suggestion, um, and and then Wikipedia developed out of that, and yeah, then it was just a matter of me filling out the basic pages, explaining how wikis work, and you know what the the basic requirements of an encyclopedia article, and and so forth, and and looking at the contributions that people had made and giving them feedback, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, how did just, Wikipedia, how quickly did it take off? Or was there something that was really the an event that made it kind of what it is today in terms of popularity? Well, the predecessor of Wikipedia was very, very slow to take off, which is actually why we started Wikipedia. So Wikipedia was really the second version of what the parent company of Wikipedia came up with. Um, and the first version was called Newpedia, and the parent company was was Balmus. Um, and Wikipedia, um, yeah, we we uh, it was just a, a matter of installing some software and and um, and getting busy and uh, announcing to all the the like couple of thousand people that um, that I had. Uh, uh, collected to work on Newpedia, just letting them know that they could work on Wikipedia. Um, and it just took off right away because there were all those people that in the previous year we had um, uh, we had gathered together and they were really motivated. So by the end of the first month, we had, I forget how many articles, it's hundreds 
Um, they, most of them were very small, like one paragraph. There were a few that were, were longer, but that didn't matter because everything just kept getting bigger and bigger. Um, okay, so something like, just describe it at the, I mean, when you have the Wikipedia format, takes off the, and what is the wikipedia format anybody you you initially had it so that anybody could edit an article anybody could post and it would be the aggregate knowledge of the internet that would keep it truthful and accurate yeah yeah pretty much yeah, yeah i i can tell that that um that you're having trouble wrapping your mind around the the idea that just anybody could edit it and that was the normal reaction for like most people for the first like five years or more um and uh yeah uh the idea is it, it's amazing that it works but it does basically um there are more people who are interested in in making a, a great encyclopedia than who want to tear it down and mm -hmm. so like vandalism and and uh nonsense uh, tends to get reverted and, and reverting was was very easy. In fact, it's uh, it was very quickly made significantly significantly easier than um, than vandalizing a page uh, in the first place. So, um, I'm not sure if that answers the question entirely. When when did some of the, like the editorial control start getting concentrated in the sense that? Uh, you know, like I, I, I think my, I had a profile up on Wikipedia very early, mm -hmm. stayed pretty stable, uh, until like, uh, I became more uh, po politically active, I guess, perceived yeah. as such 2014, 2015. Then all of a sudden I started seeing, and before that it was just, you know, people I used to do business with would come in and try to edit it to take credit for things that I did stuff like that. <laughs> no biggie. But yeah. now it was all of a sudden crazy stuff would start popping up and then somebody would go in. I didn't even know about any of this. They would tell me about this externally. And now I think I'm back up <laughs> for a while. They took me down to, for a while, just taken down entirely because apparently people were waging war <laughs> without yeah. me knowing about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like I'm a controversial alt-right, political figure from Canada or anything the uh uh you know that uh, that 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 warrants all of the f fighting over these 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 uh links when did some of that editorial well how was it at the beginning in the sense of like you just described it that there were more people that can were concerned so they stopped than the vandalizer yeah. how did it start to transform where it felt like all of a sudden there was a small group of people that had disparate control over whether your page existed and what was said on your page yeah um I'll just let me just give you a broad overview of like the decline of Wikipedia, basically. Um, in the first couple of years when I was working on it, it was still relatively small um, and uh, people were committed like philosophically to neutrality and the the notion that there would be any sort of cabal of of specially privileged people would have been anathema. I mean, that'd be really um, frowned upon. Um, by 2005 or so, I would say it, you started seeing certain articles having a, a definite slant, but they tended to be um, in science. So like the global warming article in 2005 already had you know, a an, an alarmist slant to it. But a lot of the political articles were still not really quite biased. Um, and some of them were, I think. Uh, but even by then, uh, there, there, there were, uh, you know, people who spent all their time on, as far as we could tell, on Wikipedia. Um, and that they uh, and there needed to to be a class of administrators of some sort to rein in the the legitimately bad actors, and that's never going to go away. So, um, and uh, those people didn't start actually you really clearly abusing their authority, as far as I could tell. Um, until like some point between like 2004 and 2010. But by 2010, then the the whole thing had an obvious left-wing bias. It was, at least it was obvious to me. Well, some people would disagree. Um, and it, it, 
I would describe its bias as that of the BBC at the time. Okay, so it was it was pretty establishment oriented, but it still made an effort to state the you know alternate point points of view. And the whole notion that you know uh, that Fox News, for example, or or conservative blogs couldn't be cited. That wasn't even on the radar, I don't think, by that time. That didn't come out, um, you know, until like 2015. Um, and then you started seeing basically the wokesters taking over in force. Um, and between then and now, it's just become more and more radical that the articles becoming, you know, year by year, just observably more just propaganda uh, mouthpieces and um, and where they'll, they'll take pride even in the fact, will announce, not try to hide, take pride in the fact that um, basically conservative news media um, cannot be cited as a source. And for that matter, you can't uh, cite most original uh, important books, monographs, because that's that's original research. In other words, you have to have books or articles that comment on other books that summarize the information. And that just really narrows down the sort of stuff that can be talked about on Wikipedia. And so all of those changes, um, this narrowing of the scope and, and, and the bias of Wikipedia, um, that really uh, came about in the last 10 years and in, and it really accelerated in the last five years or so. One quick question. When when did you leave Wikipedia and how long were you there for? Um, I, I left here in 2002. So March 2002. Um, I got it started in January of 2001. I started working on the projects in January of 2000. Okay. Um, but I've been following the uh, the project closely and um, started and helped various competitors of Wikipedia along the way. So I'm uh, extremely conversant with uh, what's going on. Um, and now, so. and now, ju just so Wikipedia can go update your entry with the far right accusation. Politically yeah. speaking, how do you align? How did you align? I I, I was thinking that because mm -hmm. of what Wikipedia has become, you were more left of center. Uh, but how yeah. would you define yourself politically if anybody wants to write you off for any sort of political bias? Oh, well, I, I've uh, never made any secret of this, and I've always been very open. Um, you know, when I was starting Wikipedia, I called myself a libertarian. Um, and uh, since then, I've, I, I, like in the last, say, five years or so, I would describe myself as more conservatarian. All right, so I've actually changed my views about some of the defining issues of libertarianism, but um, but not too much, not too much. I haven't really changed my views all that much. What are the hurdles for people trying to compete with Wikipedia who want to return it to its or you know have a substitute for its <laughs> uh, for its origin and of the original purpose that in fact collective mm -hmm. knowledge of the crowd of those who truly care to curate information can I, I i consider the idea of wikipedia a very democratizing idea that sure. you can challenge the concentration of power elite credentials and all the rest as the so it was at first exactly yeah. soul guardians of truth the uh uh and and it was that at first now it's shifted how hard is it for someone to try to recreate an honest wikipedia today yeah um very hard, very, very hard. And the the reason is that basically Wikipedia sucks the air out of any competing project. Um, it's it's really um, depressing to work for hours and hours on a really high quality encyclopedia article and then just never see it on the first page of results on Google. Um, and that's what's going to happen if you if you go right for, you know, uh, most other most other encyclopedias. Now um, there's there's other competing encyclopedias that have always um, come up high, depending on the topic. Uh, if you search for 
your topic plus encyclopedia, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Britannica actually will show up in search results quite often, right? That's, um, that's all right. But there's so many other encyclopedias. Um, and of course, a lot of people have, you know, spent hundreds of hours, thousands of hours on Wikipedia only to leave and then um, start uh, their own competing encyclopedias and they're um, and they just they don't take off, right? I, I put a lot a lot of time into Citizendium back in 2006 and 2007. There was the model was similar to Wikipedia, but we required the use of real names. We required that people endorse a sort of um, community charter, which got rid of a lot of the nonsense. Um, and we had a, a, a special role um, approving articles for um, for experts, but the experts weren't in control. That's actually so. That's just an example of, of something that I've I've worked on, and uh, I, I've actually gave that uh, away to one of the old contributors um, a couple of years ago, and she's actually she's been working on it. So it's it's still uh, it's still out there. And I think what we need to do now is just to um, make it possible to reach down into the long tail of all of those other encyclopedias and make it easier to find the articles. And you can actually find um, a good uh, representative idea, um, not an, an exhaustive notion, um, but uh, get a, a rough idea of what that would be like if you go to encyclo search dot org and encyclereader.org. So those are two basically um, meta search engines for encyclopedias. And um, there are a couple of projects that we've been working on at the uh, Knowledge Standards Foundation. And um, they're going to get only better and better. So come back and, and, and visit them in a year and you'll, you'll see a lot of progress, I think. I got two, pra one practical question, one um, just question for my own knowledge. Did Wikipedia ever get an offer to be bought out by a big tech company? Like, was there ever an offer to go public or to, to be bought out or? If there was, Jimmy Wales never told me about that. And that would have been possible only in the first like three years or so, because um, they uh, made Wikipedia into a nonprofit. And, I think it was sometime in 2003. Um, so that's when the, the Wikimedia Foundation was born. But originally, um, yeah, it was a .com, not a .org. Um, and it was uh, for profit. We were gonna run ads um, and so forth. And, and uh, the, uh, let's just say that the uh, volunteers uh, rebelled at, at the notion. But that was Jimmy Wales' um, original business plan for Wikipedia. The second now, question was. Sorry, go ahead, baby. Oh, yeah, sorry. In terms of a, I mean, like we'll get into a solution to Wikipedia. Why cannot they just outright ban based on ISP or whatever? Ban the clearly activist uh, vandalizers of other of otherwise, you know, uh, decent entries. Why can't they kick out the activists to try to bring back some sort of neutrality? Oh, but the activists are in control at every level. So they would never do that. That the uh, inmates have taken over the asylum long ago. And how how does that work that they're able to take over? In other words, is there something, is it the foundation that says this group of people will have final editorial no. control? No, no. I mean, um, basically, I... That's a good question. I mean, there's there's a lot to say on that question. I mean, the bottom line answer is I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's um, what I would say is it looks organic, but it might not be. Let's put it that way. The whole process um, seemed to be a, a an organic development uh, where um, the people who were left, who um, did, did not just abandon the project in disgust, um, happened to be left wing. 
and they ganged up and and drove out the people who were more right wing and libertarian and um yeah and that's where we are and ultimately those people um elected people to the board of directors which was uh, sort of bottom, mostly bottom up um and um yeah, and that's pretty much how how it happened. But I, I actually think that uh, there are various, I mean, let's just put it this way. Once it looked like this would be a an influential uh, organ of public opinion, then um, the spy agencies and the PR firms um, would have been fools not to put in a lot of money buying up people who had the most um, clout in the system, setting them to work full time, um, consolidating their influence and working on behalf of, of those uh, of the highest bidders, essentially. I actually think that's what, what has happened. Uh, do, do you, Larry, do you have any idea what the annual budget of Wikipedia is now from the donations? Well, okay, look, you have to understand when we talk about Wikipedia, we're talking about a, a volunteer project um, where at least in theory, most of the people who work on it aren't getting paid. Um, and they certainly aren't getting paid by the Wikimedia Foundation. Now the Wikimedia Foundation has a budget but their job is not to write or edit Wikipedia at all. It's, I mean, it's funny, but it's true. But um, the, the one legitimate function that they have is to pay for and run the servers. Okay. okay? So they got to do that. Um, but uh, there's all kinds of other people who have, as far as I can tell, I would just describe it as make work jobs and get paid like $150,000 a year to do it on in, um, in the Bay Area. And uh, so... What can I say? Um, I, I I I can tell you what the what the budget is. It's like um, I think they're they're spending like uh, tens of millions of dollars a year. I think it's might be like fifty million though, and they raise like over a hundred million um, per year now. Um, but I mean, are they actually spending all that money on the development of content? Well, a little bit, yes. They have they have some grants that they give out. To, to people who actually do work, but they're not they're not employees of the of the foundation. Now, so. how much of their market dominance uh, is due to Google manipulation versus just being first out, first up, and thus they just developed an organic market monopoly? Well, it's it's very common for people to say that it's um it's not organic that it, it was like google from the beginning google realized that there this is something that they ought to that they ought to push um and uh for all i know that is true that could be true for for sure uh, we know that now that wikipedia or that google rather is more than willing to put their fingers on the scales. So, um, but uh, generally speaking, if Wikipedia has the only substantive article on a subject, then um, when people are just looking for a general introduction to the subject, of course, that's gonna, that's gonna rise to the top organically and, and probably should um, uh, for, any, um, for any encyclopedia. And I think that's also going to be that that will be um, explain a lot of their market dominance. Um, so I don't know how much of it, though. Like I say, I actually think that probably um, Google has had their thumb on the scales because Google is basically people use Google to find Wikipedia articles like what a third of the time when they're searching. So, I don't um, know. That's well, I, do, Larry, I mean, Robert, if you guys know, either of you know, who, who are the biggest donors? Are there, are there government entities or interested parties? Or is this purely like uh, grassroots Bernie Sanders type donations? 
they they have a lot of grassroots donations and they have but they have also had an increasing amount of support from like uh google and uh, and others um but uh yeah it's they're they're a 501c3 so they have to report that sort of information i haven't looked in a while but yeah, they they do get some big donations from power players in Silicon Valley, um, which again they can't directly control um, the editorial goings on on Wikipedia because the Wikimedia Foundation doesn't directly control the goings on 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 Wikipedia. But I I would assume that anyone who really wants to uh, influence articles they'll, they'll just be paying off buying up the at the influential people on wikipedia right and then I, I i imagine there's to a certain extent there's a there's a bidding war going on <laughs> i can't prove it um to some extent i can actually but yeah well maybe we could look up uh an example do you want to pull up uh david freiheit Oh no! Forget that. We we did that one earlier today. Let's pull up. Uh, let me just get up. Who? Well, I just actually had my wiki there, but it hasn't been edited since April 11th. Let's pull up uh, Robert Alex Jones. Sure. <laughs> Let's see Alex Jones. Uh, I just. Oh, we don't see it yet. Sorry. Hold on. I thought we were looking at my screen. I I just put in Alex Jones and didn't even put in Wikipedia, and lo and behold, it's the. By and large, the Wikipedia result is always the first result to come up of anything. Alex Emmerich Jones, I like that middle name, uh, is an American far-right radio show host. I, I love how they added far-right now. Of course. And now I want to go down and see it. An interview with Alex Jones, America's leading and proudest conspiracy theorist. Oh, for God's sake. I can't even stand it. But it's, oh, wow. Okay, he's got a long one. Uh, oh, yeah. So now, when when was it last edited? We can go down to the bottom. First of all, what is the difference between this one and mine, which has red in it? Like, is this? Are there like different tiers of Wikipedia pages that that has red in it? You mean like yeah. uh, has red links in it? No, red a red is sort of uh, here. W David Fryhati. I can't even spell my own name. If you look at mine, you see it. It has red on the side. Ah, uh, right, right. And um, it looks like it's less official, like in in a way, than Alex Emmerich Jones. Yeah. Um, it's just a different info box. That's the only difference. So I, the, the info box that you're using or that not, that is being used for your article, um, it, it has a different styling. That's, that's all. Okay. That's all. So the, the, the box on the right side is called an, an info box and yeah. So we look at this, uh, you have, I mean, I guess we go to the, the important part are the footnotes or, or the, the citations, like uh -huh. what, what is the most important part of assessing any individual Wikipedia entry? Um, that's a good question. Uh, generally speaking, nobody gets past the first few sentences. Um, <laughs> certainly they don't get past the first two, two, uh, paragraphs. So I would say that. Um, I, I think for a, a researcher, of course, the footnotes are very important. Um, although there's there's been some attention given to you know just how well the uh, what is uh, you know the content of a footnote, what it's supposed to support, and the actual um, the contents of the article in the footnote uh, or the book in the footnote. Now, a lot of times um, they're just misused, that the footnoting is actually really bad. Um, but uh, to the extent that, that, um, that it has a substantive, roughly correct uh, footnotes, that's useful for, um, that's useful for researchers, but like for the average everyday person, um, what we need to look at is the info box and the first couple paragraphs, especially the, the first definition, the, the first sentence, uh, the, the definition of the article. Yeah, hold on. Let's just go back and see. So it, it, we, we saw the first definition. This is Alex Jones is a far-right conspiracy theorist. Yeah. I, I know, I, I believe the far-right is a recent edition, but I, I don't know. 
as of I, when? I doubt it. I bet it's been there for years. Okay. Because of who he is. But well, hold on. I just read an article about Google when when it says auto populate, it does not. You see, oh, so never mind. I was confused. I was mistaken because there was another article saying when Google auto populates the subtitle. Here it says American radio host, and it doesn't say conspiracy theorist. But that's a totally separate problem. Separate problem for another day. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, but if you look on the, at the search results, it's actually it actually appears in Google. Right. I mean, just look well, at the first two we, lines that it has there in the blurb about the article. Right. It says was, Alexander Emmerich Jones, born blah, 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 is a, an American far right uh, radio show and prominent conspiracy theorist. So it's it's already got the dismissive um, language in in the where's, article. So they they tell you in, in the first paragraph or the first sentence even of the article, they tell you what to about? think right in the beginning. What does it say about like uh, Rachel Maddow? Oh, I just want to see what they yeah, define. That's, that's that. Look it up. It'll be interesting. Look at this. Conspiracy theory is an explanation for an event or situation that invokes a conspiracy by sinister and powerful groups. Wow. Okay. Let's go see what Rachel Maddow. Let's see what Rachel Maddow. Yes. When other explanations are more probable, it, it concludes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. American so television presenter. Implausible. Here, let's just see a conspiracy theorist. Oh, That's wait. Oh, oh, God, what am I doing here? I don't want to look at that. Well, wait, here's interesting. an interesting point. Notice Maddow's MSNBC site comes up. Yep. Up until a couple of year, years ago, if you typed in Alex Jones, InfoWars came up. Uh -huh. Google now suppresses all of that so that his Wikipedia is what comes up first. That's right. And now we go. She, she's second, and she is 49. Uh, born, is she is liberal. She is called liberal. So that's something. Yep. Um, okay. But otherwise, she's a program host, liberal political commentator, hosts the show on Emmys, MSNBC. Uh -huh. And that's about she it. She received multiple Emmy Awards for her broadcasting work and a Grammy Award. Wow. The, hey, so is Alison Morrow? Is Alison Morrow up on there? Because, I mean, she's an oh. Emmy Award winner, too. So I'd be curious. Let's see. Does Alison Morrow have her own Wikipedia? Come on. Let's see. I'm not even going to put in Wiki. Dog hair all over. Yeah, I don't even know who this is. Oh, so she, she's a she's a well a, a former. Um, oh yeah, there you go, Wikipedia. Yep. Former former. Uh, she well, only has think, a, a no, Wiki that's show. that's not it. So that's not a Wikipedia. No, nope, it isn't. I think this Alison Morrow might not actually be in Wikipedia if it's not coming no, up in the person. Well, and that's what's fast. For a period of time, I disappeared from Wikipedia. So yeah. that so I've been up there for almost a decade or however long it was. Then all of a sudden it was and, I was, and so someone let me know, you're no longer up. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And so mm -hmm. somebody looked into it. It was, I was no longer a public figure. I was like, hold on a second. I've been a public figure for a decade. I'm more public now than ever before. And I'm somehow no longer a public figure. That was their first way of trying to handle it. They, well, hold on. So, so, chat just said, pull up Jimmy Dore. Let's see how this works now. Jimmy Dore, Jimmy Dore. Okay, guys, forgive me. <laughs> anyway, okay, here we go. Wikipedia. Well, uh, flat. It's a not an unflattering picture. That's already a start. He's he's fifty six. Well, he hides it well. Good for him. James Patrick Anthony Doerr is an American comedian, political commentator, and YouTube personality. Okay, very neutral. He is the host of the Jimmy Dore Show. Okay, it looks good. Let's just. I guess we got to go to controversy. Is there any controversy? Political views. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to be more. Uh... Yeah, there'll be what what you're seeing is any almost anybody you can make I think Glenn Greenwald they'll probably still treat fair because he's no way he's, oh, you I, don't, know. I disagree. Try it. Oh, let's Wait. take a look at that then. Let's play the get the wiki gambling. <laughs> uh so tw his Twitter comes up first. Interesting. Glenn Greenwald. Where, mm -hmm. where is where, okay? Here we go. Glenn Greenwald. Very flatter. That's what he looks like. He's well, yeah, that is how he looks like. Dude, okay, there's another young looking dude. Um, Glenn Greenwald uh, is an American journalist, author, and lawyer. Very good. In okay. 1996, he founded yeah. a law firm centralizing on, uh, sorry, concentrating on First Amendment litigation. He began blogging on national. Looks decent. I Looks stand corrected. I stand corrected. They, I stand corrected. Yeah, there it, really isn't most uh, of the. Well, it's gotten better over the last year or so. There's been some improvement because they were getting so political in ways that, you know, they're they going to too many people. 
How do they define me currently? Who does what the cat want to pull up here? just a lawyer. <laughs> Wiki, Wiki, Wiki roulette. roulette. Who should we pull up next, chat? <laughs> yeah, you can try to pull, um, uh, try to pull me up. Robert Barnes' lawyer. There's a Robert Barnes that was a preacher who got hung in the tower. He's a namesake <laughs> ancestor. But the, uh, <laughs> that's one of the other ones that's up up on. Uh, and then there's the Washington Robert Post Barnes. reporter. So, yeah, there Twitter's we go. Barnes LLP. Ah, nice. Wikipedia second. There it is. Okay, boom. No picture. Born now, what to a at the Baptist. Top there? What, what is all that, Larry, at the top there? This. Uh, right. Well, uh, that basically is a uh, notice. It's supposed to be aimed at the at the readers. Um, it really helps the people who are working on it more. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just uses a, a, a sort of standard template, um, and it, it makes it easy for them to track what they consider to be um, problems with the with the article. Um, yeah, in this case, it's a multiple issues template. Um, yeah, you, it's yeah, they're black. okay. You know, at, at the beginning, it and at the very top, it's, it's now it a a political. Viva Barnes Law dot locals dot com. <laughs> now that be because anybody can contribute to Wikipedia still, right? Um, well, theoretically, theoretically, uh, the thing is, a, a lot of people um, report the experience of, of going in, um, trying to edit an article, and regardless of how well supported their, um, their edits are, and, uh, you know, innocuous, uh, the edits are, they're just instantly reverted. Um, and, uh, and either without an explanation or um, with a, a really um, unpersuasive, unhelpful um, explanation on the on what's called the talk page. Um, yeah, it's uh, it is a mess. Uh, you can't really uh, you can't really participate, especially on anything controversial, unless you are playing the game very well. New people um, are not welcome um, on any but uh, very obscure topics, and even there, maybe not. Depends on who is sort of managing those topics. Larry, here, here's the question. I mean. How do you repair Wikipedia to the extent it can be re repaired? And alternatively, if it can't be, how do you turn it into MySpace? How do you end Wikipedia <laughs> as any sort of as any sort of source, let alone a, a reliable source? Because I don't think people think that. So when you when you say how do you repair it, do you mean how do you make Wikipedia better, like more neutral, or, for example? Yeah, or, or return or to its origin. To return to its origin of being a democratizing source of influence yeah. that seeks out the objectives that an encyclopedia did, which was to be as neutral as possible. I, I don't see how that can happen at all. Um, and basically, Wikipedia is self-governing and um, self-governing, self-selecting online organizations are inherently, I mean, once they get started, once they reach a certain level of critical mass, um, they can't uh, they can't really change radically from where they are at that point. Um, basically, people who don't like the system as it is, uh, they they leave in disgust. People who like it tend to get awarded with more and more authority in the system. So it's an inherently basically uh, conservative like Washington, system. Um, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. actually I'm going to put up. 2020 election wikipedia <laughs> and by the way we'll see if this gets this this video flag <laughs> no i'm having i i have an issue with a viva clips channel uh, a nine-month-old video just got a terms of a, a community guidelines <laughs> okay i think this might be one that that i uh, referred to in a blog post that i've written i wrote a couple of blog posts in which i do what you you guys are doing and basically go through a bunch of different articles and then I make observations about them. Well, let's, um, let's, Larry, do it in real time for us, but don't say anything that gets us in trouble here. Okay. Okay. The 2020 U.S. presidential election was the most secure election in the history of America, and challenging it is a criminal offense. Sorry, that's not what it says yet. Um, 
It was the 59th quadrennial presidential election held on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. This this is so objective, it lacks objectivity. In a competitive primary that featured the most candidates for any political party in the modern era of American politics, Mm -hmm. Biden secured the Democratic nomination over his closest rival, Senator Bernie Sanders. Let's just see what let's just see it's what interesting occurs. how they uh, define Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is defined by her identity. Hold on, did I see it? How do I how do I do this? It was right where you were at. Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, Kamala Harris. Harris became the first African American, the first Asian American, the first. Oh, now I lost. It was back. In oh, the no, hold on. That, this is my bad. What am I doing? Stop it, David. Okay, here. <laughs> it's Harris is introduced in the second, uh, briefly in the first one, but in the second paragraph, where it says Harris became. The first African American, the first Asian American, and third female vice presidential nominee on the Sorry. party ticket. Yeah, so everything's about her gender, not United States Senator, former Attorney General. That it's oh, she's black and she's Asian and she's a female. Voila. Well, Robin, mm-hmm. you heard the new press secretary came out. I, I didn't I didn't even know these things, and it's none of my business. Black, gay immigrant and and as she said the first one to embody all three of these elements for the new press secretary like don't they, why why that's she not won my the identity business. olympics you know she's got extra benefits you know the uh if she changed genders then she would have got another plus apparently that's what lbgtqvv whatever plus means now it's do you got the plus you got the plus hey i changed genders plus does changing races constitute a plus i don't know no no, i don't know it depends which way justin trudeau is going to be the most uh, i'm just putting in this word which we don't need to say 60 times (laughs) okay 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 yeah i think what you're going to find you look through that article and um a lot of times it sounds really really neutral and there's all kinds of articles even on on the political topics that in particular uh, sentences and paragraphs and so forth that you know you really can't find much wrong with it um but when it matters you know like you started searching on uh, fraud um, it's going to have a really obvious point of view on that. So basically, um, if you look for the hot button issues, the really controversial uh, points of view um, uh, across a, a variety of, of articles, like I was, I was looking for um, a commentary about the riots in 2000 um, and whether oh, there what was What does it any... say about BLM? Does it include the most recent information about BLM's founders spending money in interesting places. Let's yeah, who knows? That's a good question. No, no. guaranteed it will. BL, I'm just going to put in BLM. Uh, I guess Wikipedia. I'll put in BLM wiki and then hold up. Let me let me bring it up. Let me bring up the um, share screen. Just, I, I like this game. It's called Wiki Roulette. We can just see it. <laughs> Let's see Wikipedia, and now you can see what I see. Black Lives Matter yeah. is a decentralized political and social movement that seeks to highlight That's racism. That's a smart way to. So they're starting out so that you uh, whatever their founders did don't really matter because it's decentralized. Yep, interesting. It's totally yeah. decentralized. Somebody was getting those checks. They weren't decentralized. The people who was getting the checks were decentralized. That was listen, centralized storage when the checks came in. Listen to this. When its supporters come together, they do so primarily to protest incidents of police brutality and racially motivated violence against black people. The movement and its related organizations typically at typically it's an interesting choice advocate for various policy changes considered to be related to black liberation. Mm -hmm. While there are specific organizations that label themselves simply as Black Lives Matter, such as the Black Lives Matter Global Network, the overall movement is decentralized, as I remind you guys, network of people and organizations with no formal hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Interesting. The slogan Black Lives Matter itself remains untrademarked. That's an odd thing. That's because it's not trademarkable. (laughs) By Mm -hmm. any by any group, despite being characterized by some as despite being characterized by some as a violent movement, the overwhelming majority of its public demonstrations have been peaceful. Let me just let me just see this. Mostly peaceful. Multiple sources. Of course. I mean all liberal. Now you're mentioning earlier that now if the that conservative sources don't count as credible sources. Yes. No, that's right. You can find uh, some, uh, there's one page in particular that has a big long table of uh, different 
um, news sources and it's color coded, you know, green, red and orange, I think, um, basically saying whether a given source is, is usable. Um, if you want to look it up, uh, it would be something like um, uh, Wikipedia media reliable sources, perhaps, or Wikimedia. Um, All that I know, by the way, is that mansions did not come up once. It might come up if you... Uh, Wikipedia articles should be based mainly on a reliable set. This is Wikipedia. If you, if you go to that article, it'll be linked now, from there. Why do they know. say go, secondary go down, sources? Actually. Because from a um, historical perspective, primary sources are always preferred. So why did mm -hmm. Wikipedia make the choice to go to secondary sources? Yeah, um, it's it's rooted the uh, the thinking is rooted in something that's very legitimate which is that you don't want people um making up publishing their own no you don't want to have them publishing their own original research sure. within within uh what should be just basically summaries of what is known um but then people have Basically, they say that if you cite too many primary sources, then you are essentially doing original research about that. You know, like if I sort, if I if I cite, um, you know, I I don't know, uh, the conscience of a conservative by Barry Goldwater, um, then then that's a problem. Even if I'm writing about Goldwater, I should be writing, I, I should be citing someone who is who is citing the conscience of, the, of a conservative or writing a book about Goldwater, um, because then it is more objective or something. I don't know. Yeah. The, go, I'll give an example of this as to like a, where Wikipedia can have real weight is also in the area of foreign policy. So if you look up Vladimir Putin, you're going to find that Wikipedia all of a sudden is a big fan of conspiracy theories. Uh, every crazy, kooky, conspiracy theory ever about vladimir putin is pretty much in there uh oh yeah or hey i can see the ghost of kiev as a wikipedia link let's yeah, see this here ghost of kiev is they is do it... acknowledge now to a fictitious flying ace <laughs> <laughs> oh boy yeah, so, someone asked does wikipedia have its own wikipedia entry that can be edited by anybody oh yeah right there it? it was right there you had it at the top <laughs> wikipedia yeah, the free well, of course. If you go back yeah there it is yeah. But this looks just like the, the no no no. Look, oh, it's right. right at the top. It's the top of that page where it says "Welcome to Wikipedia." Click on Wikipedia. Ah, there it is. There we go. A yeah, multilingual, free online, written and maintained by a community of volunteers through open collaboration and a wiki-based editing system. Uh, right. Is there anything? If you do go down, is there anything about controversy concerning Wikipedia on Let's Wikipedia's see. own Wikipedia? Oh, wow. Of course, of okay. course, that's that's been a part of it from from the beginning. But the thing is, it's you know, uh, <laughs> I'm I'm probably known as as one of the uh, most public figure or you know sources of. of of criticism about Wikipedia. Um, one of the biggest critics of Wikipedia. Um, I have been for a long time, but uh, there's been this debate recently um, over whether uh, I can be cited on the page about um, bias on Wikipedia, even though that's one of the things that I talk about and I'm the, the main author of uh, Wikipedia's uh, neutrality policy. Um, and, and despite the fact that I actually have written the only um, long article length discussion of uh, defending neutrality in encyclopedias, uh, journalism and education. Um, and so despite uh, these things being true of me, um, there's this really, really active debate. Um, you, you can look it up. It's called... Um, uh, Wikipedia bias or, or bias, criticisms of bias in Wikipedias, something like that. Because um, it, I mean, it's part of, as I see, is a broader phenomenon of what happened to the internet that could democratize information and influence. And there's been a counter coup for the least the last five years in particular, but yeah. beginning before then, 
in not letting YouTube have its natural algorithms search and locate data, not letting Google have its natural algorithms get actually the information or sources that people want, uh, yeah. not letting a certain broadcast even happen on social media, Facebook or Twitter. Yeah. And Wikipedia has been part of that. This taking this independent democratization yeah. of the idea of an encyclopedia and converting mm -hmm. it into another gatekeeping institution that's masquerading as an open sourced informational source. Yeah, well, um, amen, brother. I mean, basically, that's that's what I've been uh, 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 saying for the last uh, few years. And uh, oh, yeah. Um, so now. Uh so Larry, what, what are you, um, well, like, what are you working on that can be the, the, the next, well, first of all, let me back it up. What can sure. you do to prevent any new entity that will give Wikipedia a run for its money now from turning into Wikipedia left or right? Like to, I would not feel any better if it were as much of a, a right wing bias infiltration as left wing. So how do yeah. you, what, what's the cure to the problem? Not rather the cure to this particular problem. Yeah, um, I uh, that's actually one of the questions I asked myself when I was um, refining the idea that I'm pursuing right now. Because um, I agree, you don't want uh, any solution to uh, basically be co-opted by the powers that be. Um, so how do you do that? Well, the internet has a solution to that in general. Um, and that is to have truly decentralized, um, technically neutral um, networks. Uh, so think about how the blogosphere works. Um, if, you, if you have a blog um, or a, a news uh, organization that syndicates its articles using RSS, you can um, put out your content using this standard, and then others can aggregate that that content, news and blogs, um, in what are called news readers or feed readers. Um, and, uh, and the whole thing, is, you know, you can't really say that it's biased or unbiased because it was, it's the internet, right? It's just a window into the uh, a part of the internet called the blogosphere, right? Um, it's defined by the fact that all of those different sources use RSS, which is a technical standard. It doesn't have any sort of means in it whatsoever um, to, that, that would enable it to, be, um, uh, to become ideologically biased, right? Well, we should do the same thing with encyclopedias, basically. We need to make a decentralized network of encyclopedias. Um, so, and after the blogosphere, I call it the encyclosphere. And in order to make that happen, basically, there's actually a lot of things that, that need to take place. We need to have uh, the, the actual content standard. Um, we, we actually have a file format. Um, it's called the ZWI file format. It's actually just a kind of zip file, and it has uh, a specification for all the different kinds of files that need to be in it, and it represents in a standardized way um, that can be used by actually all kinds of different kinds of content, but, but certainly encyclopedia articles. Um, it has a standard way for representing them, and and uh, you can open the certain pages in there, and it looks the same across all of, of the different sources. And you don't actually have to even include the article itself. You can just have the metadata about the article as part of this ZWI file. Um, and then uh, the, the combination of the free articles and the proprietary metadata um, about the proprietary articles, um, you can build search engines, right? Um, and you can build readers. So that's that's why we have Encyclo Reader and Encyclo Search. Um, those again, EncycloReader.org, EncycloSearch.org. On the reader thing, you can actually read some free encyclopedias. They're not all there, so I mean, we it's it. What we're trying to do is very big, um, and so we haven't like gone a whole hog and like and uh, downloaded millions and millions of of uh, articles. But we're going to when when all the kinks are worked out. But it's working pretty well right now. 
Um, and uh, it's it's going to get a lot better. I, I'm going to feel comfortable basically downloading all of Wikipedia into this um, format, I think by the end of this year. Um, and when we're doing Wikipedia, we're, we'll be doing probably most of everything else. Um, and that's going to be really neat. You'll have like a, an instant search. You go to either of those, those websites that I told you about. Um, and, and here's the other thing. If it's, if it's going to be truly decentralized, then you can't be locked into using any one set of software, right? Um, in any one platform. So, um, and it also, there can't be just one aggregator, right? There actually has to be multiple um, options. So um, we actually are running two different aggregators independently, and we're building two different search engines independently, and we're making sure that they that they um, can interact with each other and share data across them, um, and uh, and it will be possible. We actually have some people who are already on board to um, install their own version of Encyclo Reader uh, or Encyclo Search, and um, you know have it. Uh, it'll be like, um, it's open source software, right? So anybody will be able to use it and we'll make it so that it's easy to adapt, just like WordPress, right? So these are gonna be like the WordPress type app applications, but for the encyclosphere, you'll be able to actually edit um, encyclopedias using this software, but which draw from blogs and all kinds of other sources all around the, the internet. So just different windows into the same overall decentralized body of content. Oh, Larry, I think after this ends, I'm introducing you to someone I know, and it might be the match made in heaven. But Robert, hold on. Before we, I know you have a question, Robert. Someone said, look up the Great Reset. <laughs> okay, this is uh, the Great I'm just going to show you that I'm do this is legit. I'm going to highlight and hit enter again, just so it repopulates. Entry number one, we form Great Reset. Entry number two, we form great reset. Entry number three, I don't think I've seen three top. Or how does this happen, Larry? Is are they are they buying this from from Google? Who knows? I I couldn't tell you to tell the honest truth. So and then the fourth the one, Wikipedia. Here you go. The fourth and the fourth result is Wikipedia. The great reset is the name of the fiftieth. By the way, two years ago, this was called a conspiracy theory by uh, Wikipedia's own term, own own definition. The Great Reset is the name of the 50th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum. The World it's Economic Forum. Just the Forum. name of a meeting. That's funny. Yeah. No, <laughs> it, it was. It got you. It got videos flagged two years ago on YouTube. It brought together high-profile business and political leaders, owned by, oh, sorry, convened by Charles, Prince of Wales. That's the, there's no H in there, and the WEF, and okay, whatever. Uh, just everyone can go read that. I just love the fact that the first three results are the WEF form itself. That's 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 unique. Okay, Robert, sorry, I know you had a question there. Oh, oh no, so so are you confident in the, the capacity of this to be a solution to return to the roots of Wikipedia and, and, and offer a meaningful alternative? And what do you think the time frame is for the delivery of that? Um, the answer is yes. Basically, I've been thinking through different possible solutions since basically 2005 or so. Um, I've tried personally to develop a, a few different kinds of solutions. Um, and I, I think actually, uh, basically for the reason that that uh, you, you brought up before, there's basically we have to have um, um, a, a guarantee against uh, being taken over by the left. Um, it has to be a, an independent network that is robust. Let, let's put it this way. As long as the funding doesn't run out, um, it's going to happen. Uh, I, I have people who are uh, very technically adept, who are involved, um, and they assure me that there is absolutely nothing about this that is hard. Um, that is, uh, that is, it just requires putting in the, in the time and the concepts are all old and proven. 
So um, it's just a matter of, of uh, basically getting it done. And we have been too, I mean, on very little money, um, just spent like a, over $200,000 altogether in the last 18 months or so. And we've, we've built a lot of the back end, not so much of the front end, like for the, for the public to use, although you, you can see some stuff there. Um, but uh, that's going to change. That's going to change. So anyway, I'm, I'm very bullish, actually, about our, our chances of uh, solving the problem we're trying to solve. Larry, um, this is an interesting question. Could digitizing pre-2006 print encyclopedias with OCR to build a comparative database for fact-checking that can be overrided with citations by empirical, scientific, archaeological research be helpful? That's a mouthful. Why pre-2006? I don't know, but digitizing the printed word so that you can't get into the memory holding that we saw with uh, 8645 type crap where they edit out the murderous uh, implication of 86ing somebody, digitizing it, what would that do? What could that do? And could that be a solution? Um, yeah, well, I mean, basically what we're working on is the technology of doing something like that. It supports that sort of thing. Um, we're, we're going to be encouraging um, the, and, and actually we will, we will build the tools for existing encyclopedias. Um, and this includes obviously, uh, traditional reference publishers and people who own the copyrights to, uh, the, to those, uh, uh, older encyclopedias, um, will give them the, uh, all of what they need basically in order to get that stuff online. Again, even if it isn't, um, uh, even if it is not proprietary, um, or sorry, even if it is proprietary, we'll still be able to uh, link uh, to the articles. And, and who knows, maybe we'll find some decentralized way of uh, allowing people to, to get paid for uh, articles as well, although that isn't as high of a prior, uh, of a priority for me. I actually think what's going to happen in the long run is once this, uh, once the software is in place and running very well, like just I'll take, give you an example of what I mean by the software. Um, we, we have um, a, a woman who has recently, just in the last month, started working on uh, a WordPress plugin. Um, and what this will do is uh, once, once you have the plugin um, turned on, um, you'll be able to press a button on a, on a page if it's an encyclopedia article and that and you want to put it on the encyclosphere, it will actually push it to the aggregators, the, the ones that we have, and, and uh, it will then be available through the various search engines. Um, and, uh, and so I can easily imagine how there will be... Um, a, a competition to write the best article on each topic, you know, um, once, once all of the articles are out there, you know, in the, the long tail on every single topic, it's, uh, it's really an eye opener. You know, comparing the results, even even if you just look at at uh, Encyclosearch or Encyclo Reader now, just look at the results on encyclopedic type topics. Um, there versus like Google, and uh, it's frequently more useful. And that, and we're just searching over a uh, hundred thousand articles from uh, a lot of different sources. That's going to change radically when there are millions, and then when it becomes possible um, and easy for people to to submit new articles and to, to create very easily create new encyclopedias, like I can imagine like a, 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 a an academic basically uh, um, selecting uh, encyclopedia articles from many different sources, right? And aggregating the, them together in a, a new collection um, that this is, it's going to me, it, it'll basically put Wikipedia in totally to shame, right? And and then I, I haven't even started talking about the the um, rating system, uh, or I should say the rating systems that will uh, that will arise. So we'll have support for multiple competing ratings 
and ways of, of aggregating the ratings. So will blockchain have any role in this? Um, it can, it definitely will not have to. Um, it won't be part of like the back, the backbone, but actually one of the um, newest uh, volunteers on the project is putting um, the uh, the ZWI files, those are the encyclopedia articles on uh, on the encyclosphere. Um, they're putting it into IPFS. So IPFS is like, uh, it's kind of like BitTorrent, but um, BitTorrent for uh, people who like who who like uh, crypto. So yeah, it actually has an associated coin, file coin. Um, I don't think that's necessarily required or that it's it's going to be the answer, but we're going to support people who want to do that. Um, in fact, one of the one of the um, organizations who originally supported this idea, I worked for them for almost two years, Everipedia. Um, and they also are committed. They haven't started it yet, but they're going to um, have a strong commitment. Uh, recently, recently repeated that they're going to put that on their blockchain. So, um, yeah. Can, can, uh, Larry, I, I'm an idiot and I will always be an idiot. What the hell is blockchain? How does it work? And what is it? How is it a solution to anything other than confusing an adult? <laughs> um, it's it's hard to explain um, very briefly, but you can think of it as a as a kind of distributed um, database. But it's it's made in a certain way, right? Um, each new addition to the database is appended to the end of the last addition to the database. And exactly how things get added, that that's how the different, um, how the different blockchains differ. Um, so in the case of like the Everpedia blockchain, for example, um, anyone can propose a new addition uh, in, in the form of a new article or an edit to an article, um, whether it, uh, remains on the blockchain, though, depends on the, uh, the vote of the people who, who hold tokens. So if there are more tokens devoted to a yes vote than a no vote, then the change stays up. That's just an example of how somebody might use a blockchain. Um, so, and, and not all blockchains use voting at all. Um, some of them, um, that, that actually would be um, uh, proof of stake. I'm not even trying to explain why it's called proof of stake. It involves staking something. Um, and then, uh, but uh, Bitcoin uses a different way of determining whether um, whether a uh, a new block is added to the blockchain. It uses proof of work. Right, and it's there. It's just relatively easy to see if if a, a certain number um, satisfies the mathematical conditions that are needed to accept something as a new block, as a as a new Bitcoin. Um, so when somebody comes uh, comes up with a new number that represents a Bitcoin, Bitcoin, then it's added as a Bitcoin. Um, so anyway, it's it's highly technical. I know. I'm sorry. But it, it's I see, um, I, not only do I not I understand. So blockchain, it's a block uh, built on the next part, which forms a chain. What happens if you cut the chain in half? How do you maintain the data from one end of the blockchain to the other? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, that's another way in which um, different blockchains differ from each other. But you know, um, some of them uh, literally vote across the what are called the the block producers um, and uh, you know they have certain rules about how they vote and and a lot of it is automated so it's not like people are involved um, but you know people can get you know uh, they can get involved under certain circumstances um, it, if you really want to understand what blockchain, 
is just think of it as an attempt to manage a, a collectively shared but decentralized database of, of, originally it was financial information, right? But it could be information about anything. So it essentially is very similar to BitTorrent. If you remember BitTorrent, um, it still exists. And in fact, the uh, Encyclosphere lives on BitTorrent. And that's one of the ways in which you, you can get to it. Um, and you know, uh, if you, and that actually might help explain it a little bit better. BitTorrent is a simpler concept, but it's a similar concept. In BitTorrent, basically, um, I have a copy of a file, um, and when I run a certain kind of you know BitTorrent server, I basically publish the availability of my copy to the world, and anybody um, can who who wants to can basically get my copy. Um, and, uh, but it's that the, the origin can be masked. Um, so it doesn't, nobody has to know that it's coming from me. Um, and as long as somebody has a copy of the file, then, um, then anybody uh, can, can get it. Um, and it's, um, it, I believe it's content addressed. What that means is that, um, Basically, you you uh, where it lives in BitTorrent is determined by the content of the file, essentially, you know. Um, and then, so so if you know what you're looking for, and anybody has a copy, all you have to do is to to put this what's called a hash of the content into a a BitTorrent um, uh, you know browser software, and then you can download it. Right, so this this makes it possible for people who who like want to share movies and 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 uh, music and and all kinds of other things too, right? Um, it makes it possible for them uh, to to share uh, in a decentralized network, uh, uh, you know, files that are um, that can't be um, can't be censored. That's the really cool thing about BitTorrent. Right. Um, so yeah, it's it's and and <laughs> basically that's that is a, the big advantage. What I just described, as far as I'm concerned, that's the big advantage of of uh, blockchain. But you don't have to have to have a blockchain. You don't have to have this business about people like owning a token um, in order to to have um, that the advantages of a decentralized network. So. Robert, I'll say, let me say one thing. I love watching people who understand it, explain it. And I know you understand it. I will mm -hmm. never understand this, what you just explained. I will never understand Bitcoin. I will never understand uh, a lot of things. Uh, but now, Larry, I ask Robert, I'm going to ask what Robert's book is, but I can read his. What is the book you have over your left shoulder, sir? Ah. Right. Oh, thank you for asking. Um, so this is um, something I came out with a couple of years ago, Essays on Free Knowledge, um, The Origins of Wikipedia and the New Politics of Knowledge. It's basically a collection of my essays. There's a new one at the end called The, the, free, uh, the Future of the Free Internet, but it's basically the best of Sanger. Some of this is not online anymore, actually. Um, well, it, it, it's available on. I'm gonna I'm gonna put an Amazon affiliate link in if I'm thinking business. But uh, be awesome. is it on Amazon? It's on Amazon. Yeah, and if you if you just want to get the digital file, you can find it on Gumroad. Um, there, I actually have an audio book version if you want to listen to it. Um, oh. So it's who, on. Who, who who reads it? Larry, is it you that reads it? Me. Yeah, me. Dude, amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so hold on. It's called. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in the back here. It's called. Um, Essays on Free Knowledge by Larry Essays Sanger. Essays on Free Knowledge. Done. I will post that afterwards. Where awesome. can people find you now for what you're doing? What, what, what is your current project? And I, by the way, I Googled mm -hmm. you. You are the net worth, uh, not among the what you should be for what you've done. I had I to do you. it when you said you. Top 10 companies in the world, Wikipedia, which has now gone from what would have otherwise been a valuable commodity for private enterprise to toxic to be burnt and sent to the bowels of, uh, you know, digital hell. What are you working on right now? 
Well, um, I'm working on the Knowledge Standards Foundation. Um, and uh, I, you would follow me on Twitter at L Sanger. You'd follow the uh, Knowledge Standards Foundation account at KS underscore found, KS underscore found. That's on Twitter. Um, I believe we have a, a Facebook account, but we don't use it so much. If you want to like get involved, if you if you just want to like track us, um, then get on our mailing list, and we won't spam you too much. Just like once or twice, twice a month at the very most. Lately, it's been like once every three months. Um, and just giving you updates. We don't sell your your address, but it's encyclos encyclosphere dot org encyclosphere just like it sounds um and uh yeah just in the middle of the front page there's a sign up form to sign up there if you're interested in coding if you actually uh like the vision that i've outlined here and you actually want to participate in developing the software or if you run an encyclopedia or or anything like that and you have any sort of technical competence even if you're just like a power user you should get involved and and um the way to get involved actively with the development community is is on slack so we've got a slack group and there's a link to that on the in the uh, intro email there should be um, so if you sign up then we'll send you about uh, a link for that and uh, uh, yeah. i think we might end it on this one but serious question how do you protect encyclosphere from the cia yeah well um that's kind of like asking how do you protect the blogosphere from the cia um, and uh, I, my, my guess is you can't ultimately, like if they really, really, really want to take over something, they will find a way. Um, that, uh, but, but I don't think we can do a lot more than what, what we've done um, so far. And that is like we have a small board with people who are very committed to um, internet freedom, essentially. Um, and, you know, serious minded neutrality, essentially. Um, and we're always going to be committed to that by principle and by our published uh, standards. And I, at least, am going to make it very clear, and I have made it very clear, that um, no part of our standards will involve making editorial decisions at all that they're going to be they're going to be content neutral and then they won't pose a target um uh that can be controlled um the, the way that twitter or facebook um can be because they you know they have to have some sort of moderation system so we're not going to have a moderation system any more than the uh, than the blogosphere will we we will support ratings though um, but it will be multiple ratings, and there isn't going to be any official rating um, for uh, for the articles. Um, so, yep. Okay, last, last question. Uh, can you give everybody, once again, those two places they can go right now to search that you sure. mentioned earlier? Sure. It's uh, encyclosearch.org and encyclereader.org, just like it sounds. Yep. There, there's actually a number of others. If you're interested in, in the, um, the uh, other projects that we have going, just go to uh, our projects page on Encyclo. And in fact, if you just go, if you remember Encyclosphere, just go to encyclosphere.org and you'll find links to everything on our projects page. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post all of the links in the pinned comment once this finishes publishing on YouTube. Cool, Larry? It's amazing, man. Godspeed, because uh, I use uh, Wikipedia for you know indisputable facts, like when were the pyramids built. But now I don't even trust that. That's 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 my <laughs> level of being black built. Um, phenomenal stuff. Yeah, maybe, I feel I, I feel the same way, actually. Yeah. No, no, it's it's what happens. It's the destabilizing nature of of realizing if what you're being told now is not true, 
Why was what you were told 10 years ago true? Why was it true 50 years ago? Uh, phenomenal stuff. Larry, yeah. Robert, stick around. We'll say our proper goodbyes. Chat, thank you very much. Tomorrow, live streaming, reaction, mouth tweeting, the hearing with Tamara Lich. Um, it's a... It's, it's amazing. Godspeed in your new ventures and, uh, and right. may we be able to be a, an impetus of helping it. Wait, but stick around, Larry. We'll, okay. we'll talk and everyone else.